Welcome back, guys. In the last lecture, we've successfully used Firebase to anonymously log users in. In this lecture, we'll integrate the anonymous login and switch view features. We'll also show you how to write clean and flexible code by factorizing our code properly. This is important because it helps you easily switch your data and backend services in case you need. OK, let's begin. First, let's move this piece of code for switching view to the body of the anonymous login method. Let's put it inside the no error branch of the if statement. Basically, in this method, we'll first ask Firebase to sign users in. If it's successful, we'll then switch view to direct users to the chat view. If not, like when there's Wi-Fi connection problem, we'll report the error to let users know. All right, now let's log in. Awesome, we see the chat view immediately. The console prints the user ID, meaning we're signed in. This is still the anonymous user we logged in before because we haven't logged her out. It's how Firebase anonymous authentication works. Your accounts will be saved on your devices. If you haven't logged out yet, then even if you shut down the app, you'll be signed in again when you relaunch the app. All right, it's been great. But our login view controller has to know we're using Firebase in order for it to sign users in. What if Firebase were to be shut down, like parse? So let's create a helper class to take care of these tasks. Hit Command N to create a new Swift file in iOS source category. Let's name this file helper because the controllers will use it as a helper. All right. In this file, we'll create a helper class. We use class keyword to define a new class. Name our new class helper because we'll use this helper once. We'll create a singleton static let um, helper uh, be an instance of the helper class. All right. Singleton pattern is useful when we use this class just once, like you're not going to log in twice, right? It basically means that this property, in this case, a helper instance, exists just once. And it's only being created when needed. This class will have methods for signing users in and switching views. The view controller can then ask a helper instance to perform these tasks and doesn't need to know what's behind the scenes. Basically, any time we want to do that, simple, simply ask the singleton helper instance. All right, we want this class to handle user login and view switching. So let's move the code for these tasks in the login view controller to this class. OK, let's make the anon login anonymously did tapped function as a method of the helper class. Uh, let's see. The method name is not so nice because this method should be used by everyone, not just buttons. So let's delete did tapped. All right, looks good. This class doesn't need to know who will use it. Uh, there's an error here. Oh yeah, we need to import Firebase authentication service because we're using its methods. All right, great. Now let's go back to the login view controller to clean it up. First, delete the import Firebase auth command because the controller now doesn't need to know what service is used. Then delete the Firebase login and switching view code in the anonymous login function. Later, the login view controller will ask a helper instance to perform these tasks. Now, let's finalize the helper class definition. Uh, there's some errors here. What are we doing wrong? All right, let's click them to see what these errors say. Um, um, oh yeah, right, we're using UI stuff, so we need to import the UI kit. Okay, the errors are gone. Anything else we're missing? Okay, here. This function is not an IB, IB action anymore, so let's just delete the any object parameter. Great. Now let's go back to the login view controller. Uh, and the login anonymously did tapped action. Call the singleton instance of the helper class and ask it to call the login method. So its login method is uh, login. Actually, let's copy it over from the class definition. Copy it. OK. Now just go back to the login controller and call this method. Uh, paste it. And that's it. All right, now run the app. You can see that we don't ever mention Firebase in our controller. Every task is done via the helper class. This makes the code highly flexible. Okay, let's check it out. All right, great. 
it still works perfectly. You can see the user ID in the, in the console, but our code is now much more well-organized. Next time, we'll code up Google Login. See you then.